Solo, a Star Wars story opens this weekend, but since IGN beat us to the punch on a things you didn't know about Han Solo, and it's the 10th anniversary of Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, we're setting our sights on that other handsome smuggler played by Harrison Ford. But don't get your Wookiee in a twist, there's still plenty of Star Wars things in this episode too. Trust me. Here are nine things you didn't know about Indiana Jones. Probably. The Indiana Jones franchise is a hallmark of the action-adventure genre, and Harrison Ford in the titular role is one of the most iconic movie heroes of all time. So it really boggles the mind that the part almost went to Tom Selleck. You might already know he was actually a lock, and the only thing that kept him from signing on was an obligation to start production on his new show, Magnum P.I. He chose... poorly. What you may not know is Danny DeVito was their top choice for Sala, and the only reason he wasn't able to join the cast was his contract with Taxi. And if you ever want a taste of the twisted alternate universe where Selleck and DeVito are in the Indiana Jones movies, just watch Romancing the Stone and the Magnum P.I. Raiders of the Lost Ark parody episode. Our childhoods really dodged a bullet. The dog? <laughs> you are named after the dog? <laughs> yep, he actually was. George Lucas named one of the greatest characters in movie history after his Alaskan Malamute, Indiana. It was also the same dog that gave Lucas the inspiration for Chewbacca, which is, boom, a bonus Star Wars thing, as promised. But Indy wasn't the only character to get the canine treatment. Hard to believe, isn't it? Short Round was also named after the dog of the screenwriters for Temple of Doom, and Kate Capshaw's character, Willie Scott, was named after Steven Spielberg's dog. Willie is my professional name. Indiana. Capshaw and Spielberg were later married, and for the sake of household harmony, I can only hope the dog was cool with it. And of course, there's Shia LaBeouf's character Mutt, which is basically a freebie. Got a lot of fond memories of that dog. <laughs> The Indiana Jones series is set against an array of exotic backdrops, and since CGI wasn't really an option for the series before Crystal Skull, the bulk of them were actually shot on location, though I'm sure the experience greatly influenced their later projects to incorporate the use of an air-conditioned blue-screen soundstage. For instance, while shooting Raiders of the Lost Ark in Tunisia, they needed to remove dozens of TV antennas from rooftops in order to make this wide shot accurate for the time period. The temperature was also triple digits for every day of shooting, and almost everyone got food Food poisoning. Bad dates. Spielberg was the only one who didn't get sick because he ate every meal from canned foods flown in from the UK. The sword versus gun scene was originally going to be a long sword fight sequence, but after Harrison Ford got sick, they improvised this classic moment. Also, producer Frank Marshall stepped in to play this pilot after the stuntman took ill. But worst of all was John Rhys Davies, who had a 105 degree fever, and while shooting a now thankfully deleted scene, he bent down and straight up shit his pants in front of the whole crew. A British tar is a soaring soul that's free as a mountain bird. There was also a fair share of external physical injuries on set, like when Short Round broke a stick over this guy's head and the other piece went flying and gave Kate Capshaw a black eye, or when Shia LaBeouf pulled the rotator cuff in his pelvis while doing swordplay with Kate Blanchett. And now that I read that out loud, I'm realizing how dirty that sounds. Oh, you fight like a young man, eager to begin, quick to finish. Also, legendary stuntman Pat Roach was knocked out cold while on fire when this breakaway chair just didn't break. But the scales were balanced when Harrison Ford herniated his back, flipping Pat over his head, and needed to make an emergency flight back to LA for an experimental back surgery. Jeez, more like injury, Anna Jones, am I right? <laughs> Come on, show a little backbone, will ya? Thankfully, Ford had gotten into great shape in preparation for his shirtless scenes, and he credits this physicality for getting him back on set good as new. Though, during the six weeks that he was out, Ford's stunt double stepped in to do most of the indie shots in the mines. Vic Armstrong, besides having the coolest name in history, doubled for Harrison Ford in the first three movies, and his wife, Wendy Leach, doubled for all the women. But this wasn't the first action franchise they teamed up on, which is, boom, a bonus segue! Before Spielberg started to work on Raiders of the Lost Ark, he really wanted to do a Bond picture. Though Lucas was able to convince him to work on Indy instead, you can still find plenty of 007, like this opening scene in Temple of Doom. I mean, who are you kidding? Shocking. Nothing shocks me. Short Round's subtle Bond-style introduction. This is Mr. Round. 
Shut James Bond. Bond. Former Bond girl Allison Duty, now an indie girl, and of course casting the original Bond, Sean Connery, as Henry Jones Sr., and then having him shot by a former Bond villain using Bond's signature weapon, a Walther PPK. Not to mention good old Vic Armstrong, who has doubled for four James Bonds in his day, along with his wife Wendy Leach on the Bond Girl stunt team. And Wendy Leach also did stunt double work for C-3PO, which is a boom, bonus Star Wars thing, and another instance of the Lucasfilm snake eating its own tail. Oh, did someone say snakes? What would an Indiana Jones movie be without a hefty dose of real, live, creepy crawlies? Well, probably a much easier movie to make, since they inevitably decided to use CGI in lieu of dealing with thousands of gross living creatures. For Raiders, they constructed the set for the Well of the Souls at the legendary soundstage at Elstree Studios in London, where The Shining was filmed, and filled it with approximately 9,000 snakes from three different breeders. It was originally 2,000, but Spielberg requested more when that didn't cover enough for a wide shot. Also, most of them weren't even snakes. The bulk of them were glass snakes, which are actually lizards with no legs. You can spot them if you see any blink since snakes don't blink. They also shot the bug scene for Temple of Doom at Elstree and used something in the neighborhood of 50,000 bugs, though there was only a quarter of that number left at the end of the shoot since they kept escaping onto the streets of London. And while Harrison Ford is actually totally cool with snakes in real life, Kate Capshaw needed to be medically sedated to cope with this scene. The rats in The Last Crusade were apparently pretty easy to deal with since rats can be trained but the monkey and Raiders was not so easy to direct. George Lucas actually did some second unit directing on this monkey Sig Heil scene, and it apparently took 50 takes to finally get it. Oh, oh, no. Also, the monkey sounds were done by voice actor Frank Welker, who did the voice of Megatron in Transformers and Abu in Aladdin, which is pretty fitting, since that evil monkey is basically like a mix of Abu and Megatron. The first three movies, and to a larger extent than you might think, The Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, rely heavily on real vehicles, sets, and practical effects. Like this scene, with actual dudes getting blasted by actual debris, or this miniature town that was built for the nuclear bomb test scene. Also, the studio really wanted Ford to have his whip digitally added later for safety reasons. Thankfully, he whipped those execs into shape. But one of my favorite shots is this shot of an aquatic plane, which used to belong to Howard Hughes, was actually filmed on land, then the water and a matte painting were added later. In the traveling map shots, a model was used, and I still can't tell the difference. And while they made this plane completely from the ground up, the submarine was a loner from the movie Das Boot while it was still in production. Also, this shot in the warehouse at the end of Raiders is a matte painting that took months to complete. And who could call themselves a child of the 80s if they weren't traumatized by this scene? This face melting was achieved by using multiple layers of wax and filming a time lapse of it melting under heat lamps. And if you think this shot of Belloc's head exploding is a bit too much for a PG rating, the MPAA ratings board has a segue for you. The Indiana Jones movies were instrumental in creating the PG-13 rating. Oh, Raiders of the Lost Ark was originally going to get an R rating based on this head-exploding shot, but they compromised down to a PG by obscuring the shot with flames. Temple of Doom, which has a grisly scene of mutilation and human sacrifice, somehow squeezed by with a PG, but raised serious questions about movies that fall somewhere in the middle of a PG and R rating. Spielberg eventually proposed the PG-13 rating to MPAA president Jack Valenti, and the rest is history. Then the subsequent two movies received a PG-13 rating, even though they are arguably the tamest in the series. Actually, now that you mention it, Crystal Skull was pretty gruesome to watch in its own way. Hey, I kid, I kid. Okay, time to make good on those Star Wars things, because there's still a bunch, and one is even featured in the opening of every episode of Things You Didn't Know. These hieroglyphs of R2-D2 and C-3PO are one of the earliest examples of a movie Easter egg. They also made an homage to it in Crystal Skull, where some of the tiles have images of the droids as well as E.T., since, you know, there's aliens in this one. Also, this plane has its registration number replaced with CPO for C-3PO. And the engine starting sounds strikingly similar to the Millennium Falcon's engines failing. Also, when Willy is getting sacrificed into a pit of lava, the door's opening sounds just like a lightsaber. And the club in the beginning of Temple of Doom is called Club Obi-Wan. Also, aside from the obvious, plenty of Star Wars actors have been recycled. Porkins from A New Hope was clearly recast because they needed top men. Top. Men. 
And General Veers and Admiral Ozell from Empire Strikes Back show up as Walter Donovan and Adolf Hitler, which really lends a lot of weight to the fan theory that the Indiana Jones movies are just Han Solo's dreams while he's frozen in carbonite. I don't know where you get your delusions, laser brain. But that's a whole different show altogether. Laugh it up, fuzzball. Well, that's going to do it for us. Hit the thumbs up if you're seeing Solo this weekend, and let us know in the comments if you'd like a part two. Because after all these years, there's still plenty of indie things. It's not the years, honey. It's the mileage. Thanks for watching, and subscribe to Cinefix for more truish things about movies, and sometimes John Rhys Davies shitting his pants right here on Things You Didn't Know.